All right, I told you guys I was gonna be doing a big battle box video, and here we go. The final count is eight battle boxes that I have to open. So let's start opening these things up and see what's inside. We'll start with these two small ones to get those out of the way. All right, so let's start with this one. See what we got. All right, we got that, useless. Oh, we got, we got a pocket shot. I've done a video of these. Uh, something vacuum sealed. Decibels, custom molded earplugs, a, head, a headlamp that looks like it's actually gonna be pretty good. And then it looks like two knives. So let's, let's look at the knives first. Dead fish, I know for sure is a knife because I've got several of their knives. <coughs> I know there's stuff they've sent me in the past has been pretty good. So this one, it's just like a, I don't even know what you would call this. Like a chopper or something? It doesn't have, it doesn't have any point. It says it's a, just a 5.5 inch folding knife wood handle. I guess you could just use it for whatever you see fit. It's very nice. It feels good in the hand. Obviously sharp. Very cool. Now this one, M3 Tactical. Oh, it's another one of these. It's one of these like pointer, pointer. It's a pointy knife. So you can wear this as like a, uh, it's like a neck knife or something. That's pretty cool. It's got a nice handle on it. I like that. Let's see. Let's see what this vacuum sealed thing is. Ironically, let's use this knife. Oh, battle bandage. Probably shouldn't have cut that open. Battle bandage. Let's see here. Gauze, maybe? It's got like a, some type of like tape or something attached to it. Oh, so you peel this back. Okay, I think I get this. So it's like, it's almost like a diaper almost. So like if you had, say your arm was like gashed open or something, you could put this on here or you probably wouldn't be doing this. Somebody else would be doing this to you. And you could have this, and you have this roll of tape of course, you would put it on much tighter than I just did, and you just wrap it up in tape to control the bleeding. So that's actually pretty cool. And it comes with a lot of, of this tape. You can really wrap this around very tightly, and then hopefully uh, not bleed out. So that's really cool. And that would be extremely useful. Let's see, next, let's go with these Decibels earplugs. Custom molded earplugs. This knife is very sharp. Okay, so it's like, it's like just earbuds, essentially. They just have different size little things that you stick on here, just like you would a set of earbuds. And now I hear nothing. Let me tell you something. These things, extremely uncomfortable. They are, are a, a very hard plastic. And just putting them in my ears for that like two seconds, I can tell you that after more than like 10 minutes, that would hurt a lot. And they would, in like, they'd be extremely uncomfortable. The edges are very, it says heat and shape. I guess you're supposed to mold mold them to your ears. Let me get some hot water, see if this, this hard plastic piece will actually mold. So I read the instructions, which I know is gonna be absolutely shocking to some of you. And what you do is you are supposed to put the earpiece on it that you want, you're supposed to put the back plug in. You're supposed to get boiling water and you put it in there for five minutes and it's supposed to heat itself up. Uh, you mold it to your ear. So after five minutes, we'll see what happens. So I have made an error. So I was checking on this thing and I pulled it out of the water to try to see if it was you know, you know, pliable enough to, uh, to mold to my ear. And I used a plastic spoon and it just stuck to the spoon. So now it's all messed up. To be fair, in the instructions, it says to use a metal spoon. Whenever it said to use a metal spoon, I assumed that they were saying that because it's boiling water and if you have a flimsy plastic spoon, it'll just melt. So I didn't realize that they are probably saying that because the plastic will stick to the plastic and then you'll end up ruining it. So luckily we have one more. And we'll try this again, but we'll use a, a metal spoon this time. All right, let's try this again. Maybe it won't stick to metal. Okay, 
seems to not stick to metal. Alright, so you just put it in your ear. It's very hot. I guess you just smash it in. Alright, so it's molded. I'm gonna set this off to the side, let this cool, and I guess we'll we'll come back to this. Let's go ahead, take a look at the pocket shot, which I'm sure at least a good amount of you have already seen my video about the pocket shot. It's actually really cool. I, I really like it. So the way the pocket shot works. Oh, look at that. This one comes with BBs. The last one I had didn't come with anything. So the pocket shot is, if you don't know, it's essentially just like a slingshot. Well, you guys know what a regular slingshot looks like. Instead of like that, it's just like this. And then you can shoot it over here. Hold, you pull the BB in there, and this thing pulls back, and then you can just... And that just went through the insulation. So that's wonderful. I already did a video comparing a, a, a pocket shot and a regular slingshot, and I think the pocket shot was more accurate, and it's easier to use. It's very... It's very durable, and I would imagine in a survival situation, if you know what you're doing, it can probably be pretty deadly, too. Now, I'm excited about this headlamp. I am in need of a new headlamp. Oh, oh! Let's not throw it all over the place. How about that? What do we have? A couple different straps, or do we got... The straps aren't important. What's important is how bright it is. Oh! It's got two lights, but only one of them's working. So it's got this red light that stays on, or it flashes. And it's got this. It has several different brightnesses. But I don't know what this one on the right does. So you just gotta hold, you gotta hold each button. Ah, you can turn them both on at the same time. It's a really nice floodlight. I really like that. I like the, I really like that you can turn uh, both lights on at the same time. Most headlamps, you just can, you can just cycle through so many settings, but you can't turn all the lights on at once. I really like that. That's cool. All right, guys. So before we go any farther, this video is sponsored by the Tilvahala Project. Now, also. This is probably one of the most important sponsors that I have, so make sure you pay attention. So the Tilva Hollow Project, what do they do? They are an apparel company, and they sell, you know, apparel, t-shirts, hats, things like that, and they take a portion of that money, and they use that to, to hand make memorial plaques for military members, law enforcement officers, first responders, people like that. So what they do is they make these memorial plaques for the families, and then they hand deliver every single one of these plaques personally to the family. So the family gets, they get a nice memorial plaque, they get these nice wristbands. So it's a really cool thing they do, delivering personalized memorial plaques. So, so far they have delivered 2,000 of these memorial plaques, totaling over $700,000. And then as if that wasn't enough, they've also donated $1.1 million to help stop veteran suicide. So what they've sent me is, their new Elite Membership Box. Now, this Elite Membership Box starts at $29.95. You get it once a month, and in the box, you get an exclusive uh, Elite Membership t-shirt, you get a free gift, and then when you sign up, you also get a free flag. And then, also, probably the most important part is, once a month, you get a newsletter that shows you all of the people that you personally helped deliver these plaques to. So, for instance, in one month, there was 72 plaques that were delivered. So that's that's a ton. So that's I think it's pretty cool to see how you're actually helping. So let's see what's in, in the Elite Membership box. So you get your exclusive t-shirt. Be someone worth fighting for. They have some graphics on the back. So that's pretty cool. And then the gift this month is a license plate License plate cover, you get a sticker, and then you also get a free flag. Let's open this up to see what this flag says. It is a Tilva Hollow Project flag. So, that's pretty cool. That's quite a bit for $29.95. So, if you guys want to support the Tilva Hollow Project, there will be, uh, all the links will be in the description. Now, let's get back to the video. Let's move on to another box. So that was only one box. We got, it's gonna be a long video. We got eight more to go, or seven more to go. Halo Neck Gator. I think that's just a, like a, like a thing you put on around your neck. Oh, is this like for when you don't have a turtleneck to wear or something? You can kind of just like wear this around your neck because you get cold. 
case you don't have a stylish turtleneck, you can just add this to anything that you wear. Oh well, that feels weird. I don't really like that. Oh well, I'm sure somebody, I'm sure some people use them. <laughs> it looks like you just cut a sleeve off of somebody's shirt and then you just wear it around your neck. I guess if you're into that kind of thing. Light band. Wide beam LED headlamp. Another headlamp. Oh, this one's a, a wide strip of LEDs. Oh, you gotta have the battery pack. Maybe not. What is happening here? Does this thing not come charged? At least a little bit? Not even charged, just a little bit. We'll put that on the charger. We'll come back to this. Next, we got a V seat. This is the exact same thing as that pillow that I tested in the last video. All right, you just blow it up and then you get a nice little seat. We've already seen that. That's nothing fancy. Get out of here. Let's cover the knives. This looks like some type of hunting knife or something. Oh, that's nice. I thought that blade was gonna be bigger because this thing is so big. But that is, that's very nice. It doesn't feel that sharp though. Fits in the hand nice. I'm not a fan of the sheath really at all. Seems like it's, well, maybe I stand corrected. I was gonna say it seems like it'll just fall out real easy. Apparently not. All right, Fox Edge. I know that, that I know that this is a knife for sure. We've got a couple other knives before. Okay, okay. Standard flip out folder knife. Seems pretty nice, good and sharp. Looks pretty cool. Now we got repair patches. Uh, a repair patch. What is it that we're repairing? Clothing repair patch or something? It's got some, it's made of some type of fabric. Washable, long lasting, durable. Yeah. So it's some type of clothing repair patch. So I guess you get like a hole in your jeans or a something in your shirt or something and you can just put one of these on there and then it'll repair it. Next we have a <laughs> Zippo Heat Bank 9S Plus. A rechargeable hand warmer and power bank. So this is a battery powered hand warmer. How do I turn this monstrosity on? A battery powered hand warmer. Okay, I turned it on. It's got three different levels of heat apparently. I put it on level three and it is, it is getting warm. Although it seems like only on one side. It seems like just this back side gets warm. That's kind of a let down. If you're gonna like hold something in your hand, you think you'd want the whole thing to get warm. It's getting pretty warm though. 110 degrees in some places, 105 to 110 degrees. It's almost too hot to hold. I'm wondering if there's a way to make it on both sides. Oh, there was like a little one and then there was a two. I wonder if that'll make it get hot on both sides. It does. So you can have it, you can have it get hot on only one side or both sides. I imagine that will drain the battery really fast. 105, so about 105 degrees on the highest setting. And you got three settings. I don't know what low would be. That's actually really cool. I don't know when I would ever need a battery powered hand warmer, but it's a cool idea. It says it lasts up to nine hours. I'm assuming that's nine hours on, probably on one side on low. 5,200 milliamp hour battery, battery bank. So that's pretty good. That'll probably charge a cell phone probably like one and a half times for like a modern, modern cell phone. All right, this earplug has cooled down and hardened. Let me put it in and see what I, See what I think? It feels more comfortable, I guess. I don't know how it would feel like for a long duration of time. Yeah, it feels a little bit more comfortable, but whenever you get right down to it, it's still a really hard piece of plastic. So over like, say if you were wearing these for work or something and you were wearing these for eight hours a day, I don't, I don't think they would be that comfortable. But maybe for like short bursts of time, that might be all right. All right, let's move on to this big one. This one is heavy. So there should be something good in here, hopefully. Okay. Seems like we got some pretty good stuff. 72 hour meal kit, 72 hour kit, emergency food supply. We will definitely be trying that. There's a box from Fox Edge. I bet this is another knife or blade of some sort, and I would be right. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. That's a knife. That's almost like like a like a pocket meat cleaver. Not ent not entirely sure what you'd use that for. I would assume whatever you want. Comes with a nice little sheath. Next up, what we got? A radio. All purpose. All purpose weather radio and portable phone charger. All kinds of cords. <clears throat> Oh, this is like... Come on. Gotta start up my radio. I'm very confused. Got a battery pack. Oh, it's not even plugged in. Let's see if we can get any radio stations. If we can, that, mean, that means that the... Uh, this portion of the video will be muted for copyright. Static. Oh, maybe let's get a station I know that I can get. All right, I know you couldn't hear that because of copyright. I mean, it works. It wasn't the clearest signal and it was very staticky. If it's like if you're in like a hurricane or something and you want to know what's going on and you have nothing else, it's pretty good. I mean, it's better than nothing. I right, see what this is. Super scan. Oh, this is just like band-aids. They're not like band-aids, I think they are band-aids. So you got several different several different types. There's no point in really opening these up. I mean they're just band-aids. So very nice things to have. Next we got something else that looks like first aid. Oh, gauze. I think it's just rolls of gauze. Oh, different types of gauze. So we got a roll of gauze. We've got gauze pads, different sized gauze pads. So that, that can be very beneficial, depending on the situation. Next, we got a little book. First Aid and Survival, The Stay Alive Guide. Let's just flip to a random page here and see what we got. How to read a compass, compass magnetic declination, burns, diarrhea. Di diarrhea, let's see what we should do. Abnormally frequent bowel movements with loose and watery stools. Usually the result of an infection or irritation, viruses, bacteria, and food poisoning. Treatment, rest. Okay, well I guess if you're in the middle of the woods and you're stranded, you should just rest. Avoid dehydration. Rest and plenty of fluids are usually all that, all that is required within the first 12 to 24 hours unless the diarrhea is frequent and substantial amount of water is lost. Thank you so much. Very useful information. The ultimate self-sufficiency manual. Grow, build, farm, survive. I'm assuming this is just a whole book about like growing plants and stuff. Why? I don't understand why anybody would read a book whenever you have YouTube. Like who's going to sit here and read this book whenever you could just find whatever that you want to know in 25 seconds with a YouTube search. I guess if you like books, this would be right up your alley. Next up we got Squirrel's Nut Butter. All natural anti-chafe. Smells like vinegar. It's supposed to help chafing. Okay, whatever you say. So let's crack into these emergency meals. Let's see what kind, of, what kind of meals we got in here. I did a whole video about emergency meals, so I can't imagine that these are gonna be much different than that video. Oh, they're ready wise too. We got teriyaki rice, cheesy macaroni, hearty tortilla soup, whey milk alternative. Crunchy granola. Two crunchy granolas. Okay. So, and if I remember right from my previous from my previous video on the Ready Wise, I think the Ready Wise sucked. If I remember right, I guess we'll try all three of these, and then we'll uh, see how good they are. All right, I got all three meals cooked. The uh, teriyaki rice, macaroni and cheese, and tortilla soup. We'll start off with the rice. It's pretty. I mean, it's it's pretty difficult to make to mess up rice. And one thing before I try any of these, one thing I am gonna say is that the macaroni and cheese stinks like bad. Like I don't even know how to describe it. 
Maybe like macaroni and cheese whenever you're in like school lunch macaroni and cheese or something. Very distinct, strong, weird flavor. Or not weird flavor, weird smell. Hmm. That doesn't taste like teriyaki. Hold on a minute. Let me see here. It tastes like rice with applesauce. I don't think I've ever tasted anything like that. That is so strange, that, but that is, that's exactly what that tastes like. Rice with applesauce. I'm gonna rate all of these out of 10. It's not uh, horrible, but it's not teriyaki. So I'm gonna give that like three out of 10. Let's try the macaroni and cheese. That has such a distinct smell. And it's so, it's so strong too. It was like, as soon as I added it, as soon as I added the water to it, it was just like a plume of like fake, cheap, cheese smell. It was so weird. All right, so let's see. Let's see what we got here. I mean, for as bad as it smelled, it's not bad. It's pretty cheesy. It's got a pretty good flavor to it. It's not that bad. I expected that to be way worse based off the smell. Like way, way worse. I'd give that like a, a six out of 10. It's not, it's, it's actually, it's not only not bad, it's also borderline pretty good. So that, that's kind of surprising. It's just that if you can get rid of that smell, it would, it would be a better experience. I'm gonna try some of this tortilla soup. I don't think I've ever had tortilla soup in my life. Okay, so we have a problem. I don't think I've ever had tortilla soup. So I don't know, is this what tor tortilla soup is supposed to taste like? Cause that tastes like garbage. There's too mu too much of something in there. It's like messing up my taste buds. There's too too much of something going on. I want to say like there's too much of some type of seasoning or something. It's completely ruined that. That that is like like this is something that I would legitimately only eat like in a survival situation. These two I would eat I would eat this casually. Like I, you could serve me this at a restaurant and I wouldn't know the difference. This if I didn't have if I had no food in the house but I had this. I would eat this and I wouldn't be too upset. This is like strictly, it's either this or you're gonna die. That's when you break this out. That's bad. That's like one and a half out of 10. So now let's go back to this uh, light band. Charge the battery up. Works pretty good. It's got several different modes. Red. Oh, I think it has a strobe. Yeah, it's got a strobe, high, medium, low. Red, strobe, off. That's pretty nice. It's it's not super bright. Let's turn the lights off. Actually, I mean, if, I, <laughs> if you were in pitch black, this isn't that bad. That's a pretty, pretty good amount of light. I and mean, you can see, you can see around. So that's not too bad. I don't think it said what the battery life is, but I would imagine with it not being that bright, the battery life is probably pretty good. So that's pretty cool. Our next box. Let's see what kind of goodies we got in here. This one looks like it's pretty stacked. We got a cup that looks like it's one of those non-tipping. So much for that. Okay. Maybe, maybe it needs like a, one of those smooth surfaces. Stowaway cutting board. Something that I assume is a knife. Charlotte's webbing camp organizer. Micro cord dispenser. Something. Something else that looks like a knife. Seven inch folding fillet knife. And that's it. So we know this is like finicky. Maybe it needs water in it. Is that the secret? Maybe it's gotta have some weight in there. No, uh, I need my piece of plexiglass. I don't know where my plexiglass went, but I have this tool case from a video that hopefully you've already seen. It doesn't even grab onto that. This is smooth plastic. Does it have to be wet or something? Oh, okay. That, okay, I, I've tested some of these non non-slip mugs before 
Okay, why does it have such a good grip now? Like sometimes it has like the grip of Zeus, and sometimes it just doesn't. This one is uh, not that great. All right, let's see what else we got here. Oh, Atwood rope. This is, uh, if you guys know who Roman Atwood is, which you probably should, this is like his family's uh, rope factory. So that's pretty cool. Jeez, I'm dropping everything today. So what is this? This is like a, some type of rope dispenser. Okay, it's a very, it's not, I thought it was paracord at first. It's a very thin type of rope. So that's pretty cool. You could just have this somewhere, pull out however much rope you need, cut it off, and there you go. It's pretty neat. It'd be good for like camping, keeping things organized and whatever. I really like that. Let's look, let's get this thing out of the way. What is this? What is this? Tea fillet case neoprene. You put your arm in it. Maybe you put your arm in here and then you can like, like slap somebody. Oh, I get it. Okay. So this neoprene case is not for putting on your hand and slapping people. There's this cutting board, stowaway cutting board. This cutting board has a nice little knife sharpener built in, which I don't know, I don't know that I would use. And then this is the fillet knife, seven inch folding fillet knife. Nice and bendy. I don't have a, a fish to fillet, but I do have a water bottle. So let's see, see if we can slice this water bottle in half. That was pretty smooth. Hmm. That doesn't feel that sharp. I think we need to get this on the sharpness tester. Let's do that. All right, let's see. This thing really doesn't feel that sharp. I don't know, I got it 240. That's actually pretty sharp. Maybe it's just, uh, maybe a fillet knife just isn't that good at slicing through water bottles. So anyway, this neoprene case is meant to hold your cutting board and your knife. So you can put this in here. So you can put your cutting board in here, and then you can put your knife in here. Then you have one package for everything. So that's pretty cool. If I was a, a fisherman or something and I needed a package like this, this would be, I'd be thrilled with this. Let's take a look at this Summit knife. What kind of knife is this? Oh, nice little pocket knife. black and gold almost looks like some type of like decorative knife it feels a little bit cheap i must say the blade has just a little bit of wobble to it that i don't really like but other than that i mean it looks cool it's a nice little knife now finally we go on to charlotte's webbing to me like literally this just looks like a some type of combination of like dog leashes Is this a dog leash? This literally just looks like a dog leash. Like there's a collar, there's a handle. Oh, it's like, it's supposed to be like a, like a clothesline. You hang this up and it's got all these little holes here and here. And then you can put these hooks through the holes and then hang things on it. So it is kind of like a dog leash, just with a bunch of holes on it. And it's got all these little, all these little hooks. So you could use it kind of like a clothesline. So you could put this on here hang it up then you have like this little clasp to put like a t-shirt on or something so you can like hang this through a campsite that's actually pretty cool i actually like that at first i thought <laughs> i guess i was kind of right it kind of is like a, like a like a dog leash a little bit but that's pretty cool keep things organized hang up clothes to dry or whatever i think that would actually be very useful our next box this looks like another pretty good box what is this DD tarp, three by three. Includes four guy ropes, 
I assume that's short for guide. And four, pe four pegs. 19 attachment points allow for multiple setup configurations. Oh, is this a hammock? No way. Oh, wait a minute. It shows pictures of hammocks, but it also shows... It also just says it's a tarp. So maybe they maybe this company sells hammocks and this just happens to be a tarp? Actually, let's let's look at that first. Because now, now I'm interested. Oh, just like ropes and stakes. It said three by three. This is definitely not three by three. Maybe this is a hammock. Or maybe it's a bunch of different things. It's got a loop up here. Huh. Oh, it's got a bunch of loops. I think maybe you could use it as a, because it shows, uh, it shows it shows a picture of it like being a, a hammock and a tent and a tarp and all this other stuff. So I think this is one of those things that you can do multiple things with. And if that's the case, that's pretty cool. I mean, it doesn't like it doesn't feel very strong, so maybe it's not a hammock. Maybe I'll have to do a future video trying this out and seeing if uh, seeing how it works as a hammock. Next thing we have here is a model M O D L flexible water bottle. I don't know what the, the point of a flexible water bottle is. Why do I want my water bottle to be flexible? Okay, so this this water bottle it doesn't look like it came with this stuff, but it looks like you can buy like some type of water filtration device that attaches to this water bottle and like you put water in it and like it squeeze like you squeeze the water through the through the filtration device but it does come with this so i guess this is supposed to be like a water bottle that's like just has multiple just like a water bottle with multiple uses so you have i get you have just two regular lids that i guess you could just fill this up with water and then just use it as a regular water bottle. Drink out of either end of it, I guess. Or, you can have lids like this. Like this one has holes in it. So that way, you can fill this thing full of water. You gotta take the lid off if you want the water to come out. Fill it full of water, and then put on the lid that's got holes in it. Then you could have like, like a spray bottle. And you could take like a I assume like a makeshift shower or something if you needed to. So that's pretty cool. Maybe you're camping and you had like a, a water source nearby that was clean. You just need something to like like wash your hands off with or something. I can see that coming in handy. Next, let's take a look at this Fox Americas. I'm gonna assume that this is a knife. This looks like a knife box if I've ever seen one. Okay, we got a piece, of, we got some paracord. Oh, it's not a knife at all. Okay. Survival arrowheads. That's so you got like a saw blade, you got a regular arrowhead, and you got like a little tiny arrowhead. That's pretty unique. So you could like you could take these with you, put these in like a bug out bag or something, and then you have something to attach to like a stick, use as a spear. This one's a saw blade, so you could make yourself like some a little handle out of wood and you have a little saw. These two, you could attach them to sticks, hunt with them, spears, self-defense. Now that takes some skill to be able to do that uh, effectively. Not that I'd ever, not that I would ever be able to do it, but it's a cool thing to have. You can put your paracord right here in the middle. You got a nice little primitive survival kit. <clears throat> Next, we got this. It says Raptor Razor. Uh, big game skinner. So I assume this is some type of knife set. And I would be right. This is... Okay. So if this is a game skinner set, you got a saw blade. I assume to saw through bones. A fillet attachment. A pokey attachment. And another fillet attachment, I guess. And here it looks like you have some type of sharpener that I assume attaches somewhere. It's got big threads. Oh, I bet it attaches on the bottom of this thing. Just have a nice little handle. And you can take your blades and sharpen them and do whatever you need to do. This is like a, just an all-in-one, all-in-one little kit. This is empty. So I assume you can just keep all of the bits. Uh, 
Actually, maybe not. Well, you might be able to. Yeah, you can keep all your bits in here, like a multi-bit screwdriver. And then this is your screwdriver. So I've got something like this in the past before. So what's cool about it, you just take out your screws and whichever blade you want, say you want this long fillet type blade, you can just slide it right in here, put the screws back in, and there you go. You have a nice little handle, you get the blade you need, and then when you get done, you can take it off. Say you need the pointy pokey blade, you do some pointing and some poking. You gotta saw through some bone, saw through some bone. What do you need to do? So that's pretty cool. That's a really nice kit. It all stays in the one little, one little package that you could just like, if you're going to some type of like camp or something, throw it all in there and you have it all in one. I don't know how annoying it would be to have to like take the handle apart every time you want to use a different blade. And there you go. All one little kit. Nice and easy. I like that. Next we have Clean Freak, uh, Clean Freak Body Wipes. Clean Freak Body Wipes. I assume these are for whenever you get dirty, smelly. Antibacterial, scent free. Oh, nice little, a moist towelette. They say scent free, but there's definitely a scent. It smells like a, it honestly smells like a baby wipe. So I'm sure you could just, wipe off your hands or your face or whatever it is that's dirty or if you have like animal blood on your hands or whatever you can just clean your hands off that's cool that would be a, a very very nice thing to have especially if you were like on a hunting trip or something that'd be perfect oh next box i feel like this is starting to get like a marathon I've tested so many products we got a bag a strap which i'm assuming is for this bag what I'm sure is a knife, and then a book. Oh, let's see here. Let's go over the book. Like I said, why would anybody read a book whenever there's YouTube? The Total Knife Manual. Okay, I'm sure it's a book about uh, knives and axes and things and stuff. Good read. Nobody reads books anymore. Let's see what kind of knife we got. Oh, that's a very thin knife. I kind of like that. It's very stiff though. Very stiff. Needs to be kind of, kind of worked in a little bit. But other than that, it's very light. It's pretty nice. Very sharp. It's not bad. And this, what is this? Is this like a, some type of, some type of satchel? to keep stuff in. Featuring silent pocket Faraday cage with multi-shield. Oh, let me get out of this thing. So this is a Faraday cage. There's nothing in there at all. I don't know how, let me see if I can kind of peel this inside out so you can see. If you look on the inside of it, you can tell it's it's got like this like a mesh that uh, it's called a silent pocket. I think Faraday cages are just supposed to block all types of signals. If you were afraid of maybe like an EMP or something, you could like put electronics in this and then it would be safe. I don't know how you would know that like an EMP is coming, so you could like throw your cell phone in here. Um, I don't know. If you're like on the run and you don't want to be tracked or something, you could put your electronics inside of this. I don't really know, I don't really know what else you would use it for. It might be waterproof. The silent Faraday Faraday dry bag collection blocks cellular, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, signal, sat nav, key fob, EMF, EMP, RFID, water, and solar. So you're supposed to put your device in here and then I said roll this down at least four times and then know and then know that you and your device are shielded from whatever okay so if you're into that kind of thing i'm sure it, wor it would work next box tecto gear i'm sure this is a knife of some sort of course 
Oh. That has a... Let me just slice myself open on camera. That has a very nice design onto the blade. I don't know how well you can see that. It's like a, like a Damascus style blade. Very, very, very pointy. If I was to use this knife, that tip would be snapped off in two seconds. If you're into that kind of thing, and you like really, really pointy blades, could be the one for you. Handle looks nice. Comes with a nice little sheath. What we got here looks like a Eva Dry Mini Dehumidifier. So I guess like, I don't know what you would use this for. Oh, closets, safes, drawers, a safe. That would be a good place for this. Like if you had like a gun safe and you don't want your guns to get rusty or anything, throw this in there. Or if maybe you have a storage, like a storage place where you store knives or anything and you don't want any, any moisture to get into, this could be a good, uh, good option. We got some Velcro straps, fire escape. What in the world is this? First responder inspired multi-tool carabiner. Okay, so it's like a little carabiner. It's got like a seatbelt cutter thing with a nice little rubber cover so you don't slice yourself. It's got a spark wheel. I don't know why a first responder would need a spark wheel. I guess maybe maybe they just threw that in there as like a survival thing so you can make fire. Usually the first responders are putting out fires, not making them. We got a glass breaker. What else is this? A bottle opener. Okay, so this is just like a carabiner multi-tool thing that you can start fires with. Now this, what's left in this box? Oh, okay. So you can kind of see, hopefully on this paper, a demonstration. This is a sear, that's what the Velcro straps are for. This thing, you would, you would Velcro this thing to the back of your car seat. And then you can use all these little loops and doodads and whatever to secure things to the back of your car seat. So like... I don't know, backpacks, I'm sure, or like maybe some knives or whatever you people are securing to the back of your car seat. You throw this on there and secure it. So not something I would ever use, but I'm sure it'd be extremely useful for someone. All right, last box. Finally, what we got? A knife, some type of camping card multi-tool, a Pot gripper fuel canister something or other. Some rope. And some fire cubes. First things first, let's let's play with some fire. So let's see here. Fire in a single spark, blah blah blah. I'm sure it's your standard fire starter. Oh wait a minute. I think I've tested these before, if I remember right. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost positive I've got these in a, in a battle box before and tested them. Let's put it on a, on a two by four. And where's my little, oh, we'll use this thing that we just got, this little spark wheel. So if I remember right, I think you. Jeez, <laughs> that's, not, that's not what I thought was gonna happen. Wow, okay, they're very slippery. I probably should not have just rubbed that on my hands. What if my hands catch on fire? I'll, I'll use this neck gator and wipe it off. One spark and we have fire. It's a very almost like clear flame. Even with the lights off, you can just barely see it. Oh, come on, don't do this. There we go. So that works very well and it works with one spark, just like they say. Let's move right along here. What we got? Extra heavy duty 1100 paracord. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a, like a dog over there that's like losing its mind for some reason. I don't know what's going on. I think this is just a lot of paracord. So there is absolutely no reason to unravel this. So it's just a lot of paracord that comes with a little carabiner. You could make like a clothesline or whatever out of it. So I am absolutely not gonna unravel this because I will never get it back together. So, just a little water paracord. Check out this knife. Another like fancy looking knife. 
Oh, it's stiff. There we go. Another nice, another really nice looking knife. This one is very sharp. Probably almost shaving. Oh yeah. Yeah, it'll shave no problem. Very sleek. I don't, I don't really like this handle. It's too, it's almost too slick. Like it just almost wants to like slide right out of your hand. Not a big fan of that, but I like the way it looks. I guess next we'll move on to this tool. Come on, cut it. So for one, it's a pot holder. Cause it's got these like, this grippy part right here. So like, say this was the edge of your pot, you could grab a hold of it and like hold it over the fire or whatever. But then it's also got some type of puncturing tool. Oh, I guess some propane cans need to be like punctured through the top or something. So you can use this to, to puncture the top. And then there's supposed to be something else. Oh, oh, I, I got you. Okay. So it has this little spike on the underside of this handle. So with a propane canister, before you throw it away, you're supposed to puncture it. So that way, whenever it goes into like a garbage truck or a landfill or whatever, it doesn't explode. So you're supposed to screw this into the top of the propane canister and then use this to puncture or to make punctures in the can. So that way, whenever you throw it away, nobody gets hurt. So that's a pretty useful little tool. And our final tool. Let's see here. It literally... Am I missing something here? I, I saw it on the inside. It shows this picture with the, the ferro rod in the middle of it. And I saw this and I was like, wait, there's no ferro rod here, but it's in, it's in another part of the package. What's this thing? Oh, it does. You can remove it. So you put that there. So I think this is just some type of like, okay, this is a little bit ambitious here, I think. Okay, it says it's a sundial up here. Uh, okay, good luck with that. Who knows how to read a sundial? Rope tensioner right here, which, okay, I can see that. A ruler, tent peg puller right here. It's a little ambitious. Pry bar right here. That's, that's very ambitious. Ferro rod striker, which is right here, I guess. So you can. Ah, there we go. Not the best ferro rod. A rope cutter right here. Flat screwdriver, which is <laughs> that flat screwdriver piece. That is very ambitious. That is like maybe a 16th of an inch of a little tiny lip. I don't know what kind of screws you're gonna be undoing with that, but it ain't gonna be much. And it says that this is a can opener. Okay, I think this is, I think this is very ambitious. I think at, at most, this is slightly decent fire starter with a rope cutter and an inch ruler, and that's about it. That is a very ambitiously marketed tool. So, that is it. That is what you get for eight battle boxes. Uh, now keep in mind this is all of the stuff in this video was what came in the eight battle boxes But then what also came in there like I said at the beginning was the five things that I featured in that other video Which was that water purifier uh, The water bag purifier this water bottle purifier uh, The inflatable mat thing with the pillow. I think there's something else. I don't remember what else it was But that's everything in addition to those five things so Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm sure this video is probably like an hour long. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.